So this is the first lengthy title that uh, I've watched on the WWE Network. Previously, I've just watched the Raws from 1993, and those are about 46 minutes apiece, and NXT 50 to 55 minutes apiece. This pay-per-view is over 2 hours and 40 minutes, and this was a very broken and problematic viewing experience to say the least. Now, on Monday, WWE Network will have been out for a full month. There is no excuse for all these fucking problems that still persist. I was watching this pay-per-view and I just kept getting drained out from it. I couldn't even get into it because you let it run and over a certain period of time while you're watching, all of a sudden it starts buffering and buffering and buffering. You know, 30 minutes go by, 40 minutes go by, and out of nowhere, it just starts buffering every other fucking minute. And you have no choice but to restart the app. I have to restart my Xbox. And it's just really fucking annoying. This happened multiple times I've had to restart the app. And, you know, this thing has been out for almost a month. You know, there should be answers. These kinks, these little nicks should be fucking fixed by now. And it's not just the buffering. There were times when um, the pay-per-view would play... And out of nowhere, the picture size, the aspect ratio would just go all berserk for no fucking reason. And the right half of the screen would just go out of frame. So you'd just be wa you'd be missing the whole right half of what is going on. I mean, what is that? That shit just makes no sense. Why is this happening? Why are there still these little bugs, these little glitches? I do not understand. You know, I mean, th these things just, <laughs> these things shouldn't be. They shouldn't. I mean, things like, you know, aspect ratio bugs, I mean, that should not... <laughs> you shouldn't release something to the public when there's still that shit going on. You know, I mean, the WWE Network is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking fantastic. You have access to all this library, all these, you know, classic events, all these pay-per-views, all these um, televised events. But... I mean, there's still no fucking excuse for all these problems, especially with the Xbox. Since day one, the Xbox has just been riddled with problems when it comes to the WWE Network. Riddled with glitches and all these little fucking things that are wrong with it. I mean, why can we still not watch WCW and ECW pay-per-views? Why can we still not watch past WrestleManias and SummerSlams and Survivor Series and Royal Rumbles? Why is there still not even a fucking resume option? I mean, seriously, I had to restart my Xbox multiple times because it would get all glitchy. And I had to fast forward to catch up to where I was because there's no resume. I mean, this is common sense. Netflix does this. Why is WWE Network not fixing this? And they're not even, you know, addressing that they're fixing the issue. There's not even a solution that they're giving to us. They're not even saying, oh, look, we're working on it. And this is what we're going to do. It's going to be ready by this time. And that makes me very worried about the stream of WrestleMania 30. It really does. I mean, if this is ev any evidence, if this is any indication of how WrestleMania 30 is going to stream, holy fucking shit, it's going to be a fucking disaster. Okay, that being said, let me talk about this pay-per-view. King of the Ring 1993, a.k.a. The Bret Hart Show. Um, this is the first King of the Ring pay-per-view WWF ever put on. And uh, if you're a Bret Hart fanboy or, you know, Bret Hart fanatic, you love Bret Hart, he's your favorite wrestler, this is a 9.5 pay-per-view, bare minimum. But um, from an objective standpoint, like I like to um, perceive myself to have an objective standpoint, an objective voice of reason, this, I will say this is a decent show. You know, borderline good. Now, the Bret Hart stuff is fantastic. Uh, the, the journey Bret Hart goes through on this pay-per-view, the multiple matches, everything that Bret Hart is involved in, his whole story is fucking A-grade, A-plus grade, fantastic shit. But you get a lot of bullshit on this pay-per-view, a lot of filler, just unmemorable, you know, forgettable, sh bland, blah, meh, eh, shit. So, you know, I can't say this is a great show or... I, I will have to say it's a decent show. Now, thankfully, the Bret Hart stuff does take a good portion of this, but still, you do have a lot of shit. Let's go into it, and I'll uh, sh uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Your opening match is Bret Hart versus Razor Ramon in the quarterfinal match, King of the Ring quarterfinal match. This is a really good opener. I like this one a lot. Very exciting. These guys work well together. Uh, Razor Ramon, great fucking character. You know, Scarface ripoff, but Scott Hall, uh, you know, portrays him to a T. Um, a, a good, nice ending sequence with uh, Bret Hart uh, avoiding the Razor's edge. He squirms out of it, tries to um, get a backdoor slide pin on Razor Ramon, but he can't do it. So he runs up the turnbuckle, flips over, um, rolls him up, uh, I think, uh, uh, inside cradle. One, two, three, gets the victory over Razor Ramon. A uh, good uh, opening match, very exciting. It was 10 minutes long, so not enough length for me to say it was a great match. If they got more time, I'm sure it would have been great, but a uh, pretty damn good opening match nonetheless. Then you get Mr. Perfect versus uh, Mr. Hughes in another quarterfinal match, and this was just shit. Boring, very botchy and ugly. Mr. Hughes just full of fucking botches this whole match. Very fucking sloppy. Even Mr. Perfect couldn't get a decent match out of this one. And it ended fucking retardedly. You know, these old pay-per-views, this is one of the things I hate is they have these cheap fucking finishes. So Mr. Hughes stole Undertaker's urn a couple weeks ago before this show. And um, he takes the urn that is uh, is sitting ringside and he hits Mr. Perfect with it, gets disqualified, so Mr. Perfect advances. And this shit just doesn't make sense to me. Like from a kayfabe, you know, realistic point of view, let's say this is real life. You know, this is king of the ring. This is something that gives you huge recognition. Why would you intentionally disqualify yourself? It just makes no sense from a logical point of view, because it's not like the referee was distracted, the referee was looking at the action right there, and he just hits him with the urn and gives himself up, it just doesn't make sense, just a shitty match with a shitty finish, then you get Bam Bam Bigelow versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan in another quarterfinal match, another bad match, boring, you know, nothing happens, all it is is a bunch of basic offense, clothesline, scoop slams, punches, you know, very boring and basic, um, uh, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow does a flying headbutt to Jim Duggan and um, advances to the uh, next round. Not a good match. Uh, just boring bullshit. Then you get Tatanka versus Lex Luger in another quarterfinal match. And um, this, uh, uh, so during this storyline, you have Lex Luger with his narcissist gimmick. And um, there's this question of whether his forearm is legal because. He had it like a surgery done on it and there's these screws coming out of his forearm and these nuts and bolts. So when he hits people with it, you know, they get knocked out. So there's this question, is it legal, is it not? Um, the referee makes Lex Luger have to wear a forearm pad um, in order to have the match. Um, it's The match starts off, you know, good pace, fast pace, kind of a brawl. But like, you know, a minute after that, it just slows down to a snail's fucking pace. Nothing happens. It's just Lex Luger doing a bunch of fucking, you know, um, elbow drops and forearm drops to Tatanka. Tatanka's laying down for 10 minutes in the middle of the, uh, middle of the ring. It does pick up in the last two minutes because this is a, a time limit. These matches had time limits. And once it gets to the 13-minute mark, this was a 15-minute time limit. Once it gets to the 13-minute mark, it gets good because they're both desperately trying to, you know, pin the other person before the time limit expires. But they don't get to. It ends in a time limit draw. Neither man advances, so Bam Bam Bigelow gets a bye. You know, he um, gets to rest and automatically goes to the uh, final match because none of these guys um, advanced. But uh, this was a very boring match, very slow, just very forgettable and uh, bland. Then you get Bret Hart versus Mr. Perfect in the King of the Rings semifinal match. Easily match of the night. Fantastic match, phenomenal match. I wouldn't say it's a five-star match. It just never got into that gear of five-star, you know, quality. There wasn't really that atmosphere. I didn't feel those, you know, big stakes like I would for a five-star match. But definitely four and a quarter, four and a half star territory. No doubt about it. Um, just fantastic. I mean, you had great chain wrestling, technical wrestling from both of these guys like you'd expect. You had aspects of brawling, just everything in this match. Both of these guys were faces going uh, in this match, working as faces. 
but I love the storytelling and the psychology of, you know, the, the, especially the storytelling Mr. Perfect where, you know, he's a face, but in this match, he starts doing all these dirty kind of ta tactics, all these shady, you know, um, shady kind of methods to try to win this, doing anything he can to try to win this match, which, you know, showing how important this King of the Ring is, like, you know, um, pulling Bret Hart's hair, not something the face does, you know, he, um, um, lowers the rope to let Bret Hart come in, and when Bret Hart's coming in, he just kicks him, you know, just, I like that, building up on, you know, Mr. Perfect acting kind of heelish towards this, in, in this match, um, also with Bret Hart, you had in the previous match with Razor Ramon, Razor Ramon uh, stomped on his fingers and his fingers were all busted up. Mr. Perfect exploited that. There was a great part where Bret Hart's going for the sharpshooter. Bret Hart grabs his hand and starts bending it and steps on it to break out of it. Just great stuff. Um, I love the, the ending to this match. with uh, They're both desperately trying to avoid each other's finishers. Like I said with the sharpshooter, Perfect tries to go for the perfect plex, but... Bret Hart reverses it and suplexes him out of the ring and they both fall out of the ring. And then um, Mr. Perfect gets an inside cradle, but uh, Bret Hart counters it with an inside cradle of his own, gets the victory. Just fantastic match. Bret Hart advances to the finals. Great, great, great match. Definitely check this one out. Match of the night easily. Then you get Yokozuna versus Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship. This was not good. This is Hulk Hogan's last run in the WWF until he comes back in 2002. This was not a good way to go out. Very boring WWF Championship match. There just wasn't any atmosphere to this thing. I didn't feel the crowd really into this like you normally get with a Hulk Hogan match. And that hurts a Hulk Hogan match because the atmosphere, the crowd could elevate a, you know, kind of, you know, mediocre Hulk Hogan match and make it seem good. Um, but this was very boring. These guys, you know, very basic move sets, you know, the fact that Yokozuna, you know, couldn't get knocked off his feet made this all about a bunch of punches and clotheslines and boring shit. The best part is when Hulk Hogan does the big boot in the leg drop and Yokozuna kicks out at two. I believe that's the only time, uh, the first time someone was booked to kick out of a leg drop. I know Sid Justice did it in WrestleMania 8, but that's because Papa Shango missed his cue to come out and interrupt the match, so they had to call Audible where Sid kicked out. But this is, I believe, the first time somebody was booked to kick out of it. Then there's this whole stupid shenanigans, all this funny business, all this overbooking with um, just stupid shit with um, the, a photographer get, is on the ring apron and Hulk Hogan tries to um, get him down and the he takes a picture and the camera explodes and shoots out some flares and Hogan gets blinded. Yokozuna knocks him down, does a leg drop. Gets the victory to win the title. Even, you know, in his last match, Hulk Hogan just couldn't get beat clean. Whatever. Just a stupid, boring match. Then you get a real filler match. Definition of a filler match. Eight-man tag. Smoking Guns and Steiner Brothers versus the Head Shrinkers and Money, Inc. Just filler bullshit. Nothing happens. You know, the Steiner Brothers didn't even do anything in this match. And watching these past roars, the Steiner Brothers were fucking great. They had a great fucking moveset. Some pretty... Awesome fucking moves, but they, you know, they didn't display it here. This was just bullshit. Um, Billy Gunn gets um, uh, money, uh, uh, Ted DiBiase, and um, uh, Inside Cradle or Schoolboy pin some type of roll-up and gets the victory for his team. Uh, this is bullshit. Then you get Shawn Michaels versus Crush for the Intercontinental Championship. Shawn Michaels is uh, has Diesel as his bodyguard. This is... The um, I think just the third appearance of Diesel in the WWF. This was kind of okay. Getting towards decent, but not really. Still very forgettable, unmemorable. Just passable, very skippable match. You know, you can just skip this. But it's not horrible. I mean, Shawn Michaels does the best he could to get an okay match out of Crush. But, I mean, nothing really happens. Um... You get this uh, dumb finish with, um, there's this program that Crush and Doink ha um, are involved in at this time. It's dated back a couple months before this with uh, Doink um, trying to uh, distract Crush during his matches with bringing out two Doinks. And two Doinks come out here and Shawn Michaels does a sweet shit music and gets the victory to retain the title. Just very passable, skippable, you know, filler, I mean... Not filler because it's in the Continental Championship, but just unmemorable stuff. And then you get the main event, Bret Hart versus Bam Bam Bigelow for the King of the Ring final match. And this is 
Um, this is a good match. Some people, you know, talk about this is great and all that. I think it's a good match. It's not great. Um, because from a storyline wise, I understand it's very good storyline wise. Um, storytelling wise. Because Bret Hart, you know, he had this... Uh, he, he had a rough match with Razor Ramon where Razor Ramon, you know, almost broke his fingers. He had a battle with Mr. Perfect, almost 20 minutes. Mr. Perfect working on his fingers and his legs. So Bret Hart is all beaten down and tired. And here's Bam Bam Bigelow who had a bye, who got to skip around and got to rest up for this match. So he's just, you know, dissecting and calculatingly just tearing down Bret Hart. But it made the offense just very slow. It was all this, you know, move, walking around the ring very slowly, another move, dilly-dallying around. It was like that. And, you know, that's just not my type of match. But I understood it storyline-wise. That's why I still think it was good. But, you know, kind of, I mean, you know, it, the, there's moments where it is kind of slow. It is kind of boring. And then you get this stupid stuff in the middle of this match. Um, all these stupid shenanigans, all this dumb shit with, uh, Luna, Luna Vachon, while the referee isn't looking, hits Bret Hart in the back with a chair, throws him in the ring, Bam Bam Bigelow does a diving headbutt, gets the pin, one, two, three, he's named the King of the Ring winner, but then another referee who wasn't working the match comes in and tells the referee what happened, then they decide to continue the match, and then, I mean, I just, you didn't need that, it's just stupid, I mean... So many matches have outside interference when the referee is looking and all these dirty tactics and cheating. And so why isn't it called for those matches? Why isn't for those matches another referee comes in and tells the referee what happened in the reverse decisions? Why is it just this match, you know? It's just from a logical standpoint, it doesn't make sense why a referee who didn't work the match has say over the outcome. Um, but um, yeah, so I didn't like that. Um, but when it, the match does continue, from then on, it is very good. You get Bret Hart starting to do some offense, you know, get some moves in, does some nice back suplexes, um, uh, bulldog off of the top rope, gets the victory with the victory roll over Bam Bam Bigelow and becomes the king of the ring for 1993. And then you get a great closing segment. You have the coronation of Bret Hart. Mean Gene gives him the robe, the scepter, the crown. There's the chair there for Bret Hart to sit on as the king of the ring. But Jerry Lawler comes out and says he is the real king. And Bret Hart should just get down on his knees and kiss his feet in front of everybody. Then Bret Hart gets every, all the fans to chant Burger King. And that's when um, Jerry Lawler gets a cheap shot in on Bret Hart. Uh, sneak attacks him from behind. Beats him down with the crown. The scepter throws the chair on top of him. And the pay-per-view ends with uh, Jerry Lawler beating down Bret Hart. And that starts the very famous and, um, you know, pretty damn uh, entertaining program with uh, Bret Hart and Jerry Lawler. So, yeah, I will say this pay-per-view is a decent 6 out of 10. The Bret Hart stuff, great. Phenomenal. Just the whole storytelling of Bret Hart's journey is fantastic. But you've got a lot of bullshit on this show. And, you know... So many reviews I've seen give the show 7.5, 8 out of 10s. But how could you, I for all the greatness that everything that Bret Hart had to do with this was, how could you look past Mr. Perfect versus Mr. Hughes, Bam Bam Bigelow versus Jim Duggan, Tatanka versus Lex Luger, Yokozuna versus Hulk Hogan, the eight man tag, Shawn Michaels versus Crush? I mean, they're all either barely mediocre matches or just downright horrible and all of them are forgettable and unmemorable and just bland bullshit so you know i'm gonna give this a six out of ten and all those six points easily are credited to brett uh brett hart and you know all the work he did in this pay-per-view definitely iron horse performance from brett hart wrestling three matches and damn good ones too so yeah um there's my review of King of the Ring 1993. Hope you enjoyed it. I am Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.